بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope all of you and your families are doing fine الحمد لله رمضان is upon us and we are starting it Congratulations مبروك رمضان مبارك Happy رمضان We will inshallah talk about the first eight pages The first thing, of course, Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha is a very wonderful surah, the summary of Quran, we can say. It is so important that no matter how much we know, we still need to know. So uh, Surah Fatiha should be continuously studied, inshallah. And then Surah Al-Baqarah will be started and the first eight pages of it will be covered. Surah Al-Baqarah is the largest surah of Quran, as we know. It has 286 verses and many, many uh, topics are covered, topics of daily life. And this surah starts with a broken letter, Alif, Lam, Mim, which is a miracle of Quran. And then right away, Allah says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Quran is the book in which there is no doubt. This is a very important statement in the beginning of Quran, that when you start reading the Quran and the surah, get away from any kind of doubts that you may have. You know, sometimes doubts come to you from shaitan, from your own base that, you know, I am not sure if this book is really from Allah or not. Get away from doubt. I'm not sure if everything in this book is from Allah or some human words have been also included in this. Get away from that doubt. Whether this book has been preserved in full until today, get away from that doubt. Yes, it is. And whether this book is applicable to all times and all situations in every part of the world, yes, get away from those doubts. And any other kind of doubts, even if you are a non-Muslim, a non-believer, and you don't believe in this book, when you start this book, Allah basically tells you that, hey, hold on to your doubts until you have read this book and finished this book. Then you can make your conclusions at the end of the book. But hold on to your doubts so that you keep away from any biases that you may have from before and do a objective study of this book. So that's very important to set our mentality and mindset for this uh, to benefit from the Quran. And then Allah says that this book is a book of guidance for people of taqwa. People of taqwa are basically people who feel responsibility in front of their creator. People who are dutiful towards their creator. People who feel responsibility in the day of judgment of, for accountability in front of Allah. Allah says these are the people who really benefit from this book a lot. So, and then Allah explains who are the, Allah explains five qualities of them. And then after that, Allah explains the qualities of hardcore disbelievers. Those disbelievers who have decided not to believe at all. Allah explains that no matter how much you tell them, you know, they have decided not to believe. And then Allah explains after that about uh, some qualities of hypocrites. Those people who pretend that they are believers, but they are not. And Allah gives a lot of explanations for about 10 verses about their traits and qualities. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the whole humanity and says that now how you can develop taqwa, how you can really benefit from this book. Ya ayyuhan nasu budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Oh humanity, worship Allah and serve Allah, uh, your Lord the one who created you and people before you, so that you develop taqwa, or perchance you develop taqwa. So in order to really become beautiful towards Allah, in order to become righteous, in order to become pious, you need to worship Allah and serve Allah, and, and, uh, and that is the path. Then Allah explains who he is, and then Allah gives the good news, the glad tidings. Give the good news to those people who have two qualities, belief and good deeds. Belief in the truth, belief in Allah and all other aspects of belief, and good deeds. Good deeds are basically acts of obedience to Allah, to the Prophet, and any other deeds that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, give the good news to these people. Then after the, those explanations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of a mosquito. And Allah basically explains that when I give such examples, people will be divided into two categories. One group of people will be further guided with these examples and other people will be misguided. But 
only those people will be misguided who are wrongdoers. So good people will not be misguided as a result of those examples. And then after that, Allah explains that those people who break the covenant with Allah, what kind of qualities they have. Then Allah asks a question, how could you disbelieve in Allah? The one who created you, the one who brought you to this life and the one who was going to take you out of this life and then will bring you back to life and take you into account. How could you disbelieve in him? You better think about it. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the story of Adam alayhi salam. A story of Adam alayhi salam is explained in many places in the Quran, but for about nine verses from verse 30 to 39, here uh, gives a good and uh, basic explanation of that story that the main lesson is that Allah wanted to arrange uh, the first human couple to go through an experience. What was that experience? That they make a mistake and then what is the solution? To repent back to Allah and return to back to Allah and that's the process. That anytime we make a mistake and sin, we just return to Allah and repent and promise not to repeat the sin and uh, try to stay uh, in the right path after that to the best of our abilities that's the process Allah wanted the first couple to go through this before coming to the earth and then at the end of this story of Adam salam, Allah gives a very important verse says whenever my guidance come to you Whoever follows my guidance, then there is no fear, no sadness for those people. So from basically Allah explained to us from the very beginning that uh, I will send my prophets and books from time to time. And whenever my prophets and books come to humanity, whoever follows that guidance, they, are, they shouldn't worry about anything, they, no fear and no sadness. Very beautiful message. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the story of Bani Israel, the children of Israel. Bani Israel is used for the, Israel is, was the name of Yaqub alayhi salam, Jacob. And Bani Israel refers to all children of Israel basically and basically the Jews. Uh, uh, and uh, there are many, many explanations about them for about uh, 80, 90 verses uh, from verse 39 all the way to 123. Uh, but uh, inshallah we will uh, have more explanations of those stories later but one point of that those stories that start that Allah tells Bani Israel that seek help from sabr and salah from patience and daily prayers and that is mentioned also in another place uh, in the next uh, part of Quran, next part of this just that the, the next just and that's very important that uh, anytime we have any kind of hardships, difficulties, and even if we want to achieve something and succeed in something, we need patience and prayers. And then there are some other descriptions of Bani Israel. And inshallah that will be covered later on in the next uh, part. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reflect on the Quran in this great month of Quran, month of Ramadan. May Allah make us to be successful by the end of this Ramadan and the whole Ummah of Islam. Amin Ya Rabbul Alameen. Wa Jazakum Allahu Khairan. Wa Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh.